<laughs> Good game. It's a hip. Hi. Fun. Get you. Oh, yeah. Tidy, tiny little bump. My tiny <laughs> little bump. <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> See Daisy up there with the parrots on her shoulder? It's yeah. at Christmas time. Oh, really? God, look at her. Her haircut, too. Well, now she has a green mohawk. Did she really? I love it. Yeah. She just started She's film school. And... Is it a real mohawk shaved on the sides? Or... I know it's my green. daughter. Yeah. She, she has a real mohawk. Because when I saw her last time, her hair was up, but it was green, but it wasn't shaved on the side. Oh, it's... yeah. No, you're right. It, okay. It's probably just a little bit. Uh, it's, like... it's pretty short, though. It's like number number two wow. on the shaving yeah. scale. And, like... she, and she dyed it green? Green top. <laughs> 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 so she wants me to send her some new. Um, green hair dye, like they don't have it in New Zealand. Right. <laughs> like only the Hot Topic one will do That's the job. So funny. Did you see Sly Stone last night with his mohawk? I didn't. I did. I did. It was about oh this tall. My God. He had a shaved head. It was about this tall. It was flaming blonde, I guess. Platinum. Yeah. Platinum. Oh. Yeah. I mean, oh <laughs> wow. So but she got, she got a more feminine you know? <laughs> the, the, the heaviness of it. It's <laughs> taller than his head. <laughs> yeah. He yeah. was hilarious. You look a bit different, Renee, than the last time we were together. Not that different, really. Right? Oh, <laughs> I saw one well, the, then since oh, the then Lucy. since Lucy, yeah. Seen, no. Well, it's funny because last time I was here, we had you guys were having a party, um, a little get oh, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was gonna, you know, my plans were to tell you I was pregnant, you know. But there were so many people here, and we never actually got a chance to kind of sit down and chat alone. And I didn't really want to, you know, go. Oh, by the way, you know, <laughs> pregnant. I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah, the surprise to me. But yeah, so then um, I guess I told you before your your concert. That was my only other opportunity. Oh, that's right, that's right. You were five months at the time. Yeah. Um, five months. Five months to do. I know. I know. <laughs> see, if I had gone on the internet more, I would know that. No, no. I, no, I, it wasn't. I no, 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 no. She knew before we, yeah, before it was you a pretty actually big find out. Quiet, yeah. private, private. You're kind moment. of a pretty quiet, quiet I am. person, anyway. <laughs> Especially on this one, you know. And you both have had kids while you were pregnant. Uh, how's uh, how's Miles? Does he talk to you about the coming baby and and uh, yeah. what is his input? We put up a crib and um, had the little plush toys and stuff, all the pink stuff. It's just funny. So he, he goes and he throws them out, brings in Batman and <laughs> Spider-Man dolls. Something to like better. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's just for him. And then we play you know with Batman Cave and I'm the bad guy. And, takes the head off the bad guy and then he throws it to the crib, you know, so that's, it's just a play toy right now. Anything to do with the baby is a, a play thing that he can enjoy. But then every now and then they'll come up and kiss my belly and, and he makes a, a name for the little girl every day. What was his latest? <laughs> Actually his latest was pretty traditional, it was like Olivia or something, you know. But, um, what was the craziest one he came up with? Remember, you know, you don't remember anything when you're pregnant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you <laughs> really don't. When I tried day to do the mon monologues, I could hardly get through it. I don't know how lines. you did that. I don't know how I did it either, except it was. Jeez. I could hardly get through it. That I would have really nightmares like, or something that. God. God, that's amazing. That's I can't. Yeah, no. So okay. I don't remember. No. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry to spoil you. My <laughs> sons make up really grand names for things like Black Lord of the Fire oh and <laughs> Night Ears. These are our animal names. Those are for the animals? Yeah, yeah. Cats and At some point we've got to tell people things. that you, you've now announced that your dogs and your, your cats and your dog don't get together and I want to spill the beans <laughs> and that's my dog. <laughs> we've got to clue people in here. That she's faking it on the dog. People. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> we filmed something at her house and Mu I brought Muffy with me because uh -huh. I was going to be gone hours and hours. So at one point uh, Muffy came up and jumped in her lap and Oh, you big fat oh, no. sausage of a dog. <laughs> Is that what I said? Yes. Because <laughs> she was very hairy at the moment, yeah. <laughs> said she was your, your guard dog. Or your guide dog, I think. I don't remember guide which. Dog. Yeah. <sighs> so she's given the she's given the fans updates on the dog since then. Yeah. The, no, this imaginary it's, dog. Well no. no. <laughs> we have a dog in New Zealand. <laughs> Maybe <Lucky. that's> right. <laughs> anyway. Mm. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> so how was Julius when Judah was on the way? Uh, he was pretty happy about it until he realized that this damn thing was here to stay. I know. And he was like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait for that. When are we done with it yet? <laughs> and he says like that till today. You know, just, Still? Oh, really? 
Get rid of him! Kelly, you brought this in <laughs> He's here. such a pain. <laughs> wow. I know I'm waiting for that moment because I think it's going to be so funny to hear what he says, you know. Can't you take it back? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the dog was very jealous, actually. Oh, yes. Yes, really? The dog, Lucky, He's... was very jealous. He was really yeah. excited because he knew on some level he, that that a baby was being born. He could wow. he totally, and he was pogoing up and down, Rob said. Um, downstairs because he knew he wasn't allowed upstairs. But you had a home birth too, so well, I had a home birth. He was there, right. Right. and um, yeah. and when the the dog was really happy about the baby because he thought that the baby was now the lowest on the totem pole. Ah. And when he realised that he still oh. had to get out or get away from the baby, and the baby was higher oh, than him, he was no. he had his nose very much out of joint. Yeah. Dog was not happy about that. Wow. He thought he went up a run. Um. It's funny, I've been looking at home births here. It is so difficult to try to have a home birth in, in America. It's hilarious. Were you thinking of a home you, birth? Yeah. yeah, I mean, actually, I went to this. It's a very long story. But, <laughs> yeah. but I ended up looking for an alternative to a hospital. And I found this birthing center. And so I'll probably go there. I mean, I will go there. But um, she screened me to see if I'd be eligible for a home birth. And if everything goes the way it is, I, I can. But I. I find it's interesting to tell people I'm having a home birth because everyone's worried about it, you know. Family here, friends here, because they're not used to this, this idea country, of it. right? Yeah. 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 In New Zealand, it's much more common. So. Much more common. Well, you know, there are legitimate concerns. Mm. I know somebody mm. who lost two babies. Um, they they had problems, but I think they lived way out of town. And you would always you have a, a you hospital have have right nearby. nearby. Yeah. If anything deviates from the norm in any way at all, right. They ta the doctor will take you there. So if you have any reservations, then you might as well just go to the hospital. But um, yeah, no, she's there's always great. the pool. I, I know, I it. asked her about that because of you too. And um, she's this phenomenal midwife. She's been doing it for 30 years, and they're doing a study on home births in um, a birthing pool. And maybe thinking, you know, there's always new studies, but maybe thinking it's not as good for the babies as it is for the mother. So people are, but again, technology I is changing. Really love it. To be honest, you know, really. <laughs> the second time because I felt cold because your body is <clears throat> going up and down. I was like, yeah, I hit the water up and I was like, well, it's actually good. For, this is better for the baby because oh, I couldn't really tell crazy. how cold or hot it was. Really? Because your body is sort of fluctuating while. Whoa. But the uh, first time. I, I think you'd be used to that after all those pools. Oh, I don't know. Oh, the, 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 the mound. <laughs> those <laughs> freezing pools in the middle of winter that we just jump into. <laughs> the fire hoses. Now, what you're going to have is two young ones. <clears throat> They're only about three years apart, two and a half, somewhere around there, which is again, is well, this is what you've got already. So have we given her any update on what it's going to be like to have two little ones around what? at the same time? So I don't think, well, it's be four and a half. I don't consider him a toddler anymore at all, you know? Four and a half is pretty big. And how old was, was Julius when you Two and a half. Oh, two and, so it was much because I just remember that you really had two babies. Yeah, yeah. You know the thought. Well, Julius is also really um, mummy obsessed, mm. whereas Judah isn't. <laughs> I, I don't think. I mean, Julius is unusually so attached wow. to me, and and always what really he's quite sort of high maintenance. Like I cannot go out without him having to say goodbye eighteen times. Oh, it's just to yoga. Just to yoga. He knows I'm coming wow. back in two hours, but he has to. Eighteen so times. <laughs> well, maybe not. But yeah, but, but you know, it's that yeah. attachment to you. Certainly yeah. ten. Certainly ten. Miles is a little well, daddy's boy because he wants to wrestle. You know, uh, he right. wants Jews to sword like fight too. and do all these things. Yeah. So I'm just like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> can't pick you up. You know. So the dad's, you know, the daddy yeah. time is the best. So. So any yeah. moment now, he'll start with the experiments <clears throat> that we just saw on Lucy's table. Oh. I don't know. Your young I don't boy. think he's quite that advanced yet. What, what were these experiments we were just looking at? Should we tell the uh, what's growing on your dining room oh, table? Oh, we cut up um, <laughs> plastic cups and um, tried to keep them all sterile, and we put agar, this gel, sort of gel to grow <laughs> stuff you know, that you can grow bacteria. And then we did um, samples around the house of, well, we did things that kids like, like cat hair and boogers and sneeze and pee and all these things that little boys like. <laughs> I'm really interested in, and we grew bacteria and fungus and stuff. And it was a good way to illustrate how how buggy certain things are, and why Mummy doesn't want you pissing in the waste paper basket. <laughs> good. Honestly, I oh my god. I was like, why did the house 
just can't believe that basket of water there. Are oh, you kidding? And I've got to that. And it's, the little boys have used it as a urinal. Oh my god. They just like, store it there. Oh my god. It's hilarious. Oh. They're awful. And they literally have pissing contests. Do you think it's because it's the two of them and they come oh, up with these ideas? Oh, they're just awful. They're just awful. It's not, you know, Miles, the worst is that he maybe he doesn't wash his hands, you know, like, you gotta wash your hands, you know. It's not, it's Judith not so bad. is so good about the hand oh. washing. Some, pe some people just are, some people, mm. I don't care. That's hilarious. <laughs> now, uh, Lucy didn't get to see you in your photo op outfit. Can you tell her what you were wearing? Yeah, the harmonia with the, the wings with the little silver. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was the only thing that was going to fit. <laughs> and I wanted, I like to do the costumes because I think it's, you know, people are there and yeah. they spend a lot of money and I just make something Give them a little value. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. you know, make it a lot of fun for all of us. And, um, yeah, you look like And I have so much more fun because I tried it once without a costume. And, I don't know, it was a little too serious. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So she had her wings, complete with wings. Oh, it's so much yeah. fun. Yeah. And you seem to be encouraging people to touch your tummy like even me. I mean, I was just kind of oh, looking at you. I Here, didn't... go ahead, put your hand on it. Put your hand on it. No, no, no. no. I, I don't have to it. so weird when people, like in shopping malls, are really attracted oh, to you. Strangers? Strangers, strangers yeah. can be like, oh, can I touch it? Oh. That has no. never happened to me, no. No way. I mean, we were in the hot tub together, and you were about three months, three weeks away from, you know, being born down, at, uh, giving birth down in New Zealand, and I was sitting across, and even then, it would never attend. Yeah, I, mean, I, I did ask. ask. I said you could. That's right. Yeah, you, um, you, you, people were asking, yeah, and yeah. and no one really has, except for my boyfriend, you know, doing that. But but I thought, well, you know, give it a, give it a go. Yeah, yeah so I tried to feel it out, and I didn't mind. So yeah. and there were not also, many people were asking. They were all ladies, and they were all friends. Yeah, and they were so sweet about it. You know? <laughs> it was yeah. delight. It was a delightful attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, you've both been traveling to places that are radically different from the homes you're used to living in, the countries you're used to living in. Uh, Renee, you went to Israel, yeah. which was a country at war. Right. Um, I talked to you after that. You had been there before. I thought you were going. Oh, no. I. Oh, you just come back? I had just come back, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. But, I'm sorry. No, well, that's it. How did, how, was it, how did it affect you? How did you feel being in a country where... Did you feel not safe? Not at all. The whole, I think the entire time I felt more safe than I had ever thought I would be. You, really? You know, what amazes you? Especially during the Gaza pullout, you know? It's amazing. You go, wow, the world's really a much bigger place than you think. When you're sitting here watching CNN, you think, oh, that whole of Israel can be blown up to smithereens in a second. You go there, and there's it's vast isolated. landscapes, yeah. and there's <clears throat> people all over the place. And um, yeah, yeah, that part was secluded and isolated, and we were watching it on the news because we were just staying in little sweet neighborhoods, you know, where uh, my neighbor's family were living. So there was a little was activity in the mall. What's that? There was a little activity in the mall. Oh, it was yeah. close enough to. Uh, I don't know if she. Every, everybody's got. Um, an an actually, a missile landed. Well, I mean, but going into a regular mall, <laughs> regular mall compared to the one that the missile almost hit. But the um, going into a regular mall, they were uh, they were looking at the cars with the little mirrors, you know. And yeah, they had the but the um, going into a regular mall. They were uh, they were looking at the cars with the little mirrors, you know. And yeah, they had the the M16s. And then you go in, you go through a screening door to go into to a shop. So it's a whole different lifestyle. But I walked away thinking how naive we all are in America. Really interesting. We just but really don't even not to you know not yeah. to go on about that. Well, I just wanted to touch. Um, uh, these are the, really the two serious subjects because you just came back from Bangladesh in that World Vision documentary just there, and uh, that seemed again we look we know poverty exists we see it on television, uh, but actually being there is something that not a whole lot of people. No, not a lot of people go to Bangladesh. That's for sure. I think or that's see why families like Binna's family. Yeah. Oh. There's so much that you didn't see that was framed out because of the economy of you know the subject, but there was women holding these babies who were so seriously deformed, you cannot believe that nobody's done anything about it. But um, like there was this one tiny little boy in ladies' arms, and he had like a what I call a double yoke eye. He had like two eyeballs, one on top of the other, so he couldn't close his eye because there was yet another sort of eyeball sticking out. There is so much poison in the earth um, from arsenic. It's naturally occurring and because any place where it floods a lot, lots of heavy oh, metals like Katrina's good. Brought this all up in Louisiana. 
brings up a lot of heavy metals from um, underneath the ground and they've had the worst case of mass poisoning on in recorded history. Like millions of people have so much arsenic in them. They're actually developing some kind of immunity to a, a lot of things, but notwithstanding, it's caused terrible, terrible deformities. Whatever the hell is going on in, the, in their environment. Um, no, and it's nobody's going to do anything about this. Even, even if they could, the people are like, you get the sense of everybody's job is just to get through the next 12 hours. So every child has a job, whether they're paid for it at the brickyards or not, everybody has a job. You've got to be, if you have a cow, you better be feeding that cow or you're looking for grasses to feed your family. That's the salad, it's just what you can find on the ground. Um, somebody's got to go catch a fish. Um, everybody's working all the time just to get through the next 24 hours. And um, so, so for a mother or somebody to be, have to be looking after a child who's deformed or has no hope of ever contributing to the family is like, it's a huge waste of, of resources right. for the survival of that family. So you get, I got the feeling like it was just like, please, Allah, you know, when, when Allah wills it, take this child because there's no life for the kid and there's no life for us. There's nothing I can well, do. Well, yeah, there's nothing anyone can do for us. Which isn't it exactly true because those schemes by the NGOs like World Vision, I've, I've seen that they do work quite amazing and very empowering to a community. But, um, uh, but they do not have a mindset where the universe will hold them up. Right. There's no trust between, no, there's no understanding across a huge community because um, there's no social welfare, there's no sense of entitlement. You're entitled to nothing but what's right in front of you. Right. So different. Yeah. Well, and you were just recently in New Orleans again, right? And yeah, we went back for Thanksgiving and, um, <coughs> yeah, it's a big old. What? I mean, Thanksgiving was uh, uh, November, yeah. November, December, January. February, we're in fact, it's four months later, they still haven't touched a twig there. Well, that's the thing, I mean, I, I uh, obviously the Red Cross is disappointing everyone. What about Habitat for Humanity? Are they helping? They're going them? down there, yeah. They are? We have some people at the convention who are going down there. Um, part of the problem, I think, is those heavy metals. There's crazy levels of, of um, arsenic. Is it boron? I can't even, I can't list what's there, but it's now lying as a thick sort of dust on everything. So stirring it up is a problem. Huh. It's so it's not as it. if the house just fell down and you could come <coughs> in and build it up. It's the land that they're building out yeah, and all the debris that's there. It's actually finding a place to build it. And do you still own that land? And is the land going to be flooded? I mean, this is like the catch-22. Yeah, so they're trying to figure it out, but in the meantime, yeah. the families are still there. They are, but or, see, they can be, right? Our yeah. house gets Donna. She's, she's homeless from New Orleans. And um, they've got Mardi Gras coming up. Mm -hmm. and they're trying to make a really big party out of it and all the floats are showing up this year. But the residents who are, the former residents who are now living in and around um, like Baton Rouge and all over, all over the country actually, are going, well, so what? We still don't have councils. Yeah, really. Um, it's to be celebrated. It, yeah, it's a it seems like thing. the the, uh, the businesses, the bigger businesses, I don't know what I'm talking about, but the bigger businesses would be benefiting from Jazz festival and Mardi Gras, as opposed Hotels. to the right. Well, that's why everybody's really been kicked out of the hotels to right. make yeah. money for the paying. Yeah, uh, to bring in. Oh, okay, so they actually are to support the restaurants. People leave the hotels. People are having to leave. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Wow, it's hard. And, and, and you can see why they want they want some revenue for God's sake. They, oh, sure. I, you get that as well. It's yeah, just, exactly. But yeah, uh, I, at, at a human cost, you know. That's what I was wondering. Would, is you know what organizations are truly out there helping? And they're having difficulty as well. Habitat for Humanity is having a hard time if they clean the sludge first. You know, like this this person, Lily Duke, can... that we found. I think the help is going on for survival. And I think that they can't quite have, they don't have, there's no plan for rebuilding. So the help that's going on is from Habitat or from people cleaning out houses and uh, that it's really day to day survival that. So groups like are helping. Dashed, like I say, this, this lady it's lives. It's so similar. I, I saw a lot of um, similarities. It, and it's just about the human condition. It's about how human, human behavior, how humans behave under incredible stress. Yeah. And uh, it's like every man for himself. And um, I would think that with those uh, 
community development areas, which is what World Vision sets up. Like I said, when you donate yeah, the money, you do, they don't give the money to that child, they give it to a community development right. area, which then does things for the village in terms of the water. That's kind of what need, is needing to be going on in New Orleans right now until somebody can figure out how do we build the city. And that's a government thing. Oh, that's really thing. interesting. Yeah, you're right. What, so what happens in the case of, of World, World Vision, Vision is, is that a, um, a community Lead, the leaders of a community have to come and say, please help us, we're motivated, we need to do this, this and this. Help us help ourselves. That's what, they don't come in and just endow your money, say, there you go, right. spend it, or we'll do it for you. Because that doesn't um, give them any sense of ownership or pride yeah, over no, whatever the project responsibility is. Responsibility, too. And sense of responsibility, that's right. It doesn't, it doesn't uh, educate people in, in how to help themselves, how to build a well and maintain it. And, and if they put their, in their own blood, sweat and tears into a project, they will protect that road, they will, sure. um, yeah, they will help hmm. keep certain things. We want clear. a school, we'll build it, we've got a teacher, we've got students, <coughs> then, then World Vision can give them money to make the physical things a reality. That's right, but they yeah. have to put in all the money. Yeah. Mm, Speaking of children, you had your second child uh, right after Zena ended. And I wonder if there was any conflict within you between having another child and setting off on the career after Zena. Did you, did you have to do any balancing in your life at that point about? Well, the career just went away. That's what happens when you have a kid. <laughs> your career vanishes and you've got to be okay with that and know that you still exist even though you're not in the magazines or on television. Yeah, it forces you to um, be a human being first and foremost <laughs> instead of an actress. <laughs> I'm laughing because <laughs> I'm trying to balance Miles' birth classes and then finishing my film, and it's insane, it's crazy. But you know, I, I want to finish my film before the baby comes, because right. I know, forget it, I'm definitely taking my, after what I've been considering my work time, taking all that off, you know, so. But it's, it's really interesting though, but yeah. You're, your values change. Because you said at the convention that the, the, convention, the pregnancy was a bit of a surprise and you wondered how having another child uh, was going to fit into your life when you had so many plans about movie making. Um, so you, you consciously had to think, shall I have this child, shall I not? And you also mentioned that the trip to Israel played a part in your decision. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't say, shall I have this child or shall I not? But, um, but how do I fit it in with with what I had goals for me doing. Um, I don't know. Um, how did Israel fit in? It's, it's, it's such a personal, it was such a personal, personal journey that, um, you know, it's like, ugh. It's so personal. In fact, I don't want to I don't talk about, about it. it. <laughs> That's a perfectly legitimate answer. Yeah. yeah. I never know. Yeah. No. You just yeah. got to breathe, man. Stop yeah. trying to control the outcome yeah. of everything. God, yeah. And, and it was such a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, certainly. So she's, you know, do not plan in life. Oh, I know. And they're just meant to happen. That this yeah. trial could never happen except in that moment. It's such a gift. It's been amazing because yeah. it was such a, a journey for myself, for my boyfriend for Miles, for Steve, for all of us, because we are like this sort of interesting family unit that's developing. And it, it's just made everyone sort of grow in a whole new way. And so when you first hear you're pregnant, you think, oh my God, you know, <laughs> And then I realize it's been an incredible journey. So, yeah. so but Israel, the thing about Israel is that it's such a, a beautiful spiritual place that you realize, you look outside of your own situation into other people's turmoil and war in survival and, and then looking up to God because of it to look for uh, help and assistance and guidance, that that just sort of put me on the right path that, to go, okay, you know, take it in stride, I breathe every day. And I'm so incredibly blessed, you know, I have nothing so to worry blessed. about. I'm so yeah. incredibly blessed. And as long as I just keep, you know, thankful that it all seems to work out much better than I ever had anticipated, you know? That's right, you, you cannot, you can't force like the glory of life to happen, it just it happens when you just give give over. Yeah, yeah. let go. And yeah. yeah, yeah. I guess when you talk about control, it's funny because I, you, with your career, you want to have ideas of stepping stones and to be where you're going to be at a certain time, especially with planning movies and things. You know, there are stages of development, but um, 
Yeah, you learned to let all that go. <laughs> you know, you just said turn, turn it over. Uh, and there's a country song that's out that's popular now. It's, I think the phrase is um, uh, Jesus take the wheel or something like that. And, and you've been mentioning God. Yeah, I'm kind recently. of a joke. I never heard you do that before. You've become a God bother. Well, the thing is, it's interesting. I, I've been looking back <laughs> on the whole God bother. I'm bothering you guys. It's a real, it's a real <laughs> Kiwi saying. <Yeah. laughs> well, it's funny because New Zealand had a strong influence on me and my spirituality, which is funny, but not in the way that you would think. Because coming up from the South, you know, it's all about Jesus, you know, and everything. And uh, Christianity is very strong. I was sort of fortunate, I think, that my mother didn't push that on me, so I was not um, thinking that the only way I would be a, a good person is if I was saved by Christ, you know. So I grew up knowing that's not exactly the truth, and, you know, my Jewish friends are just as wonderful as my Christian friends. So, but then going to New Zealand, I didn't find myself that there's a strong sense of Christianity like there is in the South. Do you know what I mean? Nowhere has it quite like in the South. Yeah, well, it was interesting, though, but it was funny. So I, I found that I, I steered more towards believing that you create your own fate, that you drive your own destiny, and I sort of had found that conflicting with the idea that God handles it all, which is how I was sort of raised. So I found throughout the six years, I, I pulled probably more away from God, and then coming back to America, going through so much that I've been, so many changes that I've been going through the last few years, that it's, you know, it's back to grassroots. It's like, okay, you know, you gotta help me here. That's and it's God, you know, and, and yeah, so I think it's sort of been interesting for me to come back around. Does a higher power come in handy? Is that any relationship to the spirituality or the philosophy of yoga that you've been talking to me about? Philosophy. Oh, yeah. I've been doing a philosophy course. Just to see where, because it, it was, it's one of the oldest <clears throat> um, philosophical schools of thought. So I just want to see where, it, you know, yeah. where some of the origins of, of human belief uh -huh. first started. Um, no, not, yes, not but religious I, belief but so much. It's not that no, it's, slant. It's, so much. It's not that no, it's, slant. It's, well, it, it's, it doesn't really have a dogma attached. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, <laughs> this really great yoga teacher <laughs> said the other day, Ethics are for the confused. <laughs> wow. Because uh, people uh, mean that, please. Uh, okay, <laughs> That's a funny. person who's not confused has no need of ethics. And it, it doesn't mean you're necessarily a good person, but like incredibly right. evil people don't need ethics because they're not confused. They're going to do. Right. To, they, whatever they do to good or evil effect, they're going to do what they do. They're not confused. And same with very yeah. holy people. They don't need a, a list of uh, rules to go by because they have an internal moral mm -hmm. compass which says, well, this is wrong, this is right. right. You, you just know on the inside. And um, <laughs> the um, thinking is that God, we do believe in God, but we don't think of it as um, this big mean old guy who sits up there zapping homosexuals and Jews because God is way beyond oh, form. Yeah. Is beyond form. These, these are all forms and, and attachments. And and when you realize that form and time, we know this from mathematics that time doesn't really exist, and form doesn't really exist because even when you get down to atomic mm. particles, what's in an atom? It's, it's, it's mostly space. space. It's mostly it's space. Yeah. None of this really exists. And they've been saying this for four thousand years in the Vedas and everything. Um, so only now is Western philosophy coming back to that point of realizing that the only thing common here is, is, is um, it's like the stuff between the atoms mm -hmm. is what we all are. We're all made of that stuff. Mm -hmm. We all are it right now and um, therefore we are all part of this God. Right. No, well, I, I think, I think our, ego, ego, yeah, our egos yeah. have gotten separated from the feeling of this feeling of unity. Yeah. No, when I think when I say God, I mean I am thinking of a universal God. I'm not looking into um, certain religions as you know being more righteous over the other. You know, it is definitely about all being connected. I started reading this book called The God Code, and it talks about that. It's just I'm just starting it, but yeah. I, who wrote that one? I don't know. I have 
but that's the whole idea. Yeah. <clears throat> Somebody's mm -hmm. keeping an eye out on us, and, it, and it's kind of also each other, keeping an eye out on each other. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That people think about God <laughs> looking out for each other, but with, with I'm, I'm sort of extrapolating from something that you just said, is that if we're all part of this big yeah. consciousness, we're actually keeping an eye on each I think other. that's really true. It stops you getting mad at people, because you go, well, they're just another extension of yes. me, or the same thing that I am. Uh -huh. yeah. Look, there's yeah. my fault over there. Whoops! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, can't be mad at them. That's in me. <laughs> Interesting. Oh. Yeah. Now, seeing as you had your curly locks on last night when you went to the Grammy party, yeah. um, I'll segue <laughs> into the Grammy party, but you've, since we've done this last Coffee Talk, since last year, you've been doing a fair amount of singing. Uh, so how was it being a rock out? We've got to show Renee the tape of the factory appearance. How was it being a rock god up on stage at the factory? Much more fun on the inside than it, um, like I saw it on the video the next day or whenever you brought it over, yeah. and I was like, oh, 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 I thought it was better It felt more better than that. <laughs> no. But videos don't time. capture because it, in person it was, it, our, our filming of that was a little off. Except if you'd actually, if the camera had actually been back, farther so you could feel the phalange. It's almost like we were so tight we were, we were cutting off the energy. Uh. Because actually in the room, my God, it was unbelievable. It was electrifying. Your husband was standing there grinning to me. Yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> it was really, just really fun. <laughs> Are you going to do another one? Have you thought about it? Yeah, I'd do, I'd do another one. It, it takes, a lot of, um, takes a lot of energy and planning ahead of time. Like They want you to commit to these things a long way sure. ahead. And I am uncomfortable doing that because I know that People are going to fly in from different yes. states and everything, and yeah, I don't yeah. want to say yes, have them spend their money on tickets, and then pull out. It weighs really weighs on me. You know? mm -hmm. So um, often I can't commit early enough for the mm. business who wants to run it. Is that character that we saw on stage? Is that you, or is that you <laughs> being a character? Well, because it's so totally different, certainly from someone sitting uh. there. But you often wonder. You know what? That night, I think I, wa I, I, it was a little bit of a um, character. It was much more e egotist, much more arrogant than I truly. I mean, you guys know me now. <laughs> but, but like I was, yeah, it was. You know, I was quite sort of strutting and being a little bit rude and whatever. You know, because there's no, you can't go on stage and be mousy. I've done that before, and who gives a damn? No, give the people a show, for God's sake. So Did you see Madonna last night? No. Oh, yeah. she looked amazing. I, I yeah. 47? Yeah. Oh, my God. That's inspiring. It's great. She's how fantastic. About, how about yeah. Mick Jagger at the Super Bowl, 61? Yeah. Oh, my God. But, you know, you, I mean, you were dropping to your knees, and you were just roll, throwing your head there? around. The, yes. <laughs> that was <laughs> called that down on knees. Oh, Vitra. my God. So, I love it. Oh, Perfect. man. That's hilarious. I would love to see that. Anybody? I love it. And, uh, um, oh, because I just uh, spent some time with Eddie just recently, and he said, any time. Eddie? Oh. Yeah, if you want to still. Oh, no, I love it. I love it. He love offered for Lucy to come in Austin and he'd throw a band together. Give him my love. Yeah. yeah. Give him my love. Tell him I would love to do that. Okay. I've never got, I've known that. Yeah, he available. just wanted me to remind you. Yeah. He's been spending that. a lot of time with um, Cyril Neville from the Neville family. Oh, Neville Goodness. And he's. Um, He'd be available, you know, anytime. Oh my God! Can you imagine it? We'll go down to Austin. Yeah, oh, that would be fun. I know. Yeah, I'm gonna try to eventually, in the wind, but have a screening of my Diamonds and Guns. So really kidding. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Have a duo thing. Have a screening oh. of the movie and a concert. But I don't think it's the kind of thing that you'd have to plan too far ahead of. You know, so you've got the band, just rehearse with them. You know. Right, because they're all great musicians. Yeah, right? they're used to. And we could do the song that together. we did at the yeah. con. I wrote some other songs. Uh oh, does that mean I gotta get? I still have my calluses. <laughs> Do I come in for a little guest appearance here? <laughs> Share the land. <laughs> okay, I don't want to see that too. <laughs> I have been playing every night since then. Well, it's good because I am back to playing. Cyril Neville. Sure. Yes. So you might get aged out. I might, unless he doesn't play guitar. I don't know. <laughs> That's how quiet awesome I will Texas. stand aside for real musicians. <laughs> oh God, we were a couple. Um, <laughs> another thing, brave thing that was done at the convention is you were showing your first nude self-portrait. Yeah. Which Lucy hasn't seen yet either, I don't think. <laughs> I love your painting, though. Which are really good. Did you see? Oh, yeah, I, I've seen your painting at your house. I love your paintings. Oh, yeah, the face yeah. one. Right. Right. Right, yeah. It's my first one. more landscape. 
Probably, I, I wonder if the one with the dog was, was up. Was the one with the dog in the room? Howling, yeah. Oh, that was, that was oh, done okay, at the time. Okay, okay, yes, thank when you. she was thank there, you. yeah. Anyway, yeah, I, I, um, I've been How was trying that? to branch out of doing the Xena ones and to do, because I wanted to do something different, so I started looking at the nudes. <laughs> I've been wanting to do nudes for a while. I thought, well, hey, I'm so fascinated with the growing body, so I... Right. It's hilarious, because I, you know, I have to have the right atmosphere to start painting. I've got the music on, no distractions, clean house, and then and then just go with it. And it ended up being quite detailed so far. The breast, you know. Yeah. <laughs> How was it to show an audience this? You kept saying, "Oh, I'm embarrassed," and you would giggle. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I love it, but um, I get embarrassed when other people are embarrassed, you know, uh -huh. too. And um, it was interesting. So Michael Hurst was backstage before, and he looked at it, and he just kind of like looked away. <laughs> Michael Hurst, you know. He, you don't ever think would be modest about anything. I think he always had a little crush on me. <laughs> oh, is, that comes up. <laughs> that is, you're just hilarious. <laughs> uh -oh. so I, 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 I can always pick that there are, there are people who are Xena fans and there are people who are Gabriel Renee <laughs> fans, you know? And, um, I know her, you can tell. You're I, just, that is the craziest thing I've ever, ever heard. <laughs> Just because we like to talk about Shakespeare together, right? Oh, <laughs> so, no, I think we're really closer to You are touching. hilarious. <laughs> well, anyway, there was, a, yeah, there was a lot of information there. So then I'm, I, get a little, I get a little giddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, yeah. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> we're making your blush. <laughs> All the way down to her tummy. Yeah. You wrote something recently <laughs> uh, that seemed to, seemed to sort of uh, straddle what we've been discussing here, new things that you're trying. Uh, trying out to do things that you're not totally comfortable with, the things that you want to experiment with, like painting, like singing. You wrote a line on a card. She constantly walked the line between failure and fabulousness. I love that. I read that. You said, I guess that's how I just felt that day. Because um, there's a time when you do anything that's a little bit scary where you feel like, oh, I can totally freak out by now, or I can just go out there and be huge. You, 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 yeah. To go out there and just be half-assed is not really an option. It's either complete failure or, or mm -hmm. complete success, in a way. In your own eyes. I don't think other people's eyes, there's nothing you can do about yeah. that. But yeah. in your own eyes, you can either... Uh, and I often feel that. Do you think do that something. before you're going to do something? No, bit. I just recognize that feeling of instability oh, okay. on the side where you go, yeah, I'm you're all jumping. the time wrong. Yeah. I like it to jumping, and I usually just jump. <laughs> well, I don't think about it too much. Well, it's funny that. because you think I would, right? Yeah. Because usually you're the right. one that does stuff, you know? But I don't. I probably should think of the failure a little bit more. <laughs> Maybe. No, I'm joking. But I'm um, like singing with you, Last Dance. I mean, what, what was I thinking, you know? <laughs> singing with you at any point. But it's like, sure, you know? Oh, my God. Oh, my that's God. what I feel about. That's like, oh, that's hilarious. what on earth were we thinking? But we were just, you know what? That was an act of generosity, you know? It was just about, <laughs> let's do something goofy so that oh, yeah. these people who have really supported us all these years um, know that we appreciate them in return. You think it's, it's like, generosity. I'm just having, well, I'm along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> Lucy goes, I'm following. Sure. Something like, well, that's um, thing I would never choose to do normally. Yeah. Okay. Jump wonder, out, of, what, out of a cake in a we bikini, thinking? you know. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> that is the fun, I'll never forget that. Oh my god, with your legs coming out and the afro. Oh is too my much. god. <laughs> you what perched underneath it stuck in the cake. <laughs> I know. It was gross on the table. I was like, for hours. It's so <laughs> funny. Those mm -hmm. are, you know, those are just those crisis moments that you just. Yeah, know. actually, that is the good stuff in life. Like, when we're 80, we'll look back and go, we did some <laughs> cool, stupid stuff. And I <laughs> know yeah. it. Still, that's what's amazing, is we obviously did it on the show, but still, you know. In real life. <laughs> yeah, you've got to build some good memories from yeah. when you're 80. You've got to build a good scrapbook, man. So, did you build a good memory at 40 Deuce? Do you know what 40 no, Deuce is? No, I sure do. But what'd you do? She you went. But did you I dance? I just went. No, I didn't dance. <laughs> they did ask me to dance one year. That's who I went with. I went with you before. That's yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Although, no, you've been there before. The two of you went. We went back recently with <laughs> Tim and Alison Almondson and oh, good. some kids who were new in town from um, that I met in New Orleans and um, took them out for a kind of a glittery, <laughs> you know, exciting time. And um, It's a great club. It's a really great club. 
So what happened? Come on. <laughs> we have a rate. If you don't know, it's a joyless cabaret. It's a great dancers do a oh, couple of dance. phenomenal dancers, though. Yeah. I mean, but in between, no, they've got really. all these not the public get up on stage and dance, ah. and it's all these women. It's like some hideous meat market. It was, it was, and they're kind of a great floor show in their own way. But it was, <laughs> it was really trashy. <laughs> That's hilarious. And they're all like holding onto the beads and doing. Beads. Oh God! And it's all these pole dancing classes. Though. Yeah, <laughs> for <laughs> fitness, right? Oh. Everyone thinks that they're for less dancer now. Yeah, everybody's getting oh, off on being on the same stage. So wow, but these girls, I mean, phenomenal. Day. I couldn't believe the dancers. They are obviously classically trained because oh, yeah. there's nothing about what they did that is easy to do, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, is that uh, phenomenal? That's funny. So did you get, you didn't get up, huh? <laughs> you didn't get up. No, I restrained myself. <laughs> <laughs> or Allison and Tim and well, they all just tacky enough for me, right? Oh, right, right. <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> yeah, you know, Allison. They'd give you a wig, then you would have been other. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Load, load. Tim, no, uh, take true. a photo of me in the dark. Because you would have been like, I'm incognito. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't help yes. it. No um, one will recognize me. Can I tell a story? No, no. No, no, it doesn't. Tim spilled. No, no. No, no, it doesn't. Tim spilled wax all over me. That's all. He was trying to take a photo by candlelight, and I didn't know I was, I was being a good boy like this, and knocked it out of his hand. And he spilled wax oh, all down nice. this top, the skirt, and down the oh. down my boots, which had sort of brown elastic. The stuff, the ones oh. I wore um, down in your knees, actually, right. at the factory, and just like trashed my whole outfit. And um, <laughs> it was actually all right because. I didn't really like that top very much, actually. Well, that's good I was like, it's okay, Tim. You said it would make a good story. That was the night yeah, before the... Yeah, it's got the wax on you. Really. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Tim covered me in wax. <laughs> You talked about going back to, I'm, I'm, I'm rummaging, I wonder if this was at the convention, you talked about going back to Taylor High School to graduate, but that you didn't fit in it anymore there with those people. Yeah. Well, I mean, you think about it, it's a little s suburban very white collared neighborhood, you know, in Texas. And then I went to this performing arts high school where, you know, people are gay, people are uh, very eccentric, um, very reflective, very soulful and um, artistic. And you have people that are just being so unique and true to themselves. And then I tried to go back to my little neighborhood place where everyone's just trying to fit in with each other and I just didn't understand it anymore. So I didn't fit in, you know. I was the wacky, weird one. But before, I was part of the, you know, the, the conforming group, you know. I was a little off. I wasn't, you know, doing the cheerleading things. I was still in theater. But, but even then, it was very different going to see such great expressions of, of character and then going back to, to conformity. conformity. Yeah. It was disappointing. Surprisingly disappointing. I was 17, 16, 17. So I realized I had changed. It's good. It's all good. It's such a great, <laughs> such a great school. And you just went to a party last night. Actually, you've been to two parties in two nights. <clears throat> yes. Julie says I'm never allowed out again. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> First, you went to the Terry Hatcher Ladies Home Journal. We got to teach her the difference between Ladies Home Journal and Good Housekeeping. Oh, did I get busted for that? Well, everyone noticed. They could, they could see the sign on the wall behind what do you mean the photos. Was it on the? Well, that? we posted Good Housekeeping, and then when the pictures came out, it said Ladies Home Journal. I know, I the worst thing is that I said it to the editor. I thank Good Housekeeping for having me there, because I didn't see it behind me. I was going the other way. Oh, why did they just say something? Then? Well, they probably changed it when they... They probably thought, what she said, because they can't um, believe that anybody could be as dense as I am regarding <laughs> who's who and what's what. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, I wouldn't know either, so I just, you would assume the editor would correct you, you know? <laughs> They're too embarrassing to be wielded. Oh, okay. <laughs> so tell yeah. me, what was this? Yeah, it was a terrible party. It was, it was, it was, it was it funny women. It Terry was uh, women that we love for um, Ladies Home Journal. And um, Terry Hatcher was being honored, and uh, she refused to be photographed with me. No. Really? Why? Repeatedly. Really? Yeah. So but it's one do? of me with the editor. It's not, she just I mean, pretends she's she doesn't care. Like, <laughs> she just does that. It's not personal though. She's just, she's just wow. like, don't put me a photograph with any other woman. I'm guessing. With a bit of competition. I'm guessing. 
I don't know, that's you. That's you. But I want to have the details. So how does that work? So obviously you know how those things, people are just trying to put, I would get together, oh, photograph, photograph. photograph. Does she turn around? Does she leave? I mean, what she, does she, she just pretends she doesn't hear. She does exactly what you did before and walks the other way. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> you remember I thought about, I was like, I heard a bit about you, totally you talking. Yeah. Well, I guess. I don't know, it's kind of odd. But I mean, um, you were, I heard you were talking about getting freezed out by people on TV shows. That was news to me. I didn't know that you'd ever felt that before. But that's kind of that same situation, isn't it? Yeah. Is it freezed out? Is it right? You had been on like people that weren't so welcoming or something. You know, it's not that they go out of their way. To, oh no, that did happen to me once. I won't say who it was, but it was on. Uh, it was very disappointing actually on SNL. Uh, oh. I won't say exactly who it was, but. There were two people on that that went out of their way to, to exclude. Yeah. Now, I'm not surprised because I saw a special on SNL, SNL and I uh, realized how competitive it is, how hard they see, are I didn't know to either. get their skits. Yeah, that's know. right. And if, wow. Yeah. That's funny. You think Don't even guess because there were only two and, there, and the others were incredibly wonderful. <laughs> so I would hate to mm, besmirch you know, all of them for behavior of two. Yeah. Do you think it's with television shows? I wonder if it's the same on film, and is there a difference, you know? Because what did someone say? It was like Philip Seymour Hall said something about actors are meant Philip to Seymour support Hoffman. each other. What's his name? Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman. The actors are meant to support each other, you know? Do you know what I mean? And and you wonder with TV shows, you wonder if, if it's too much about uh, the ego and, and getting on, you know, the cover TV guide and, and trying to, you know, Fight your way to you know, there the are more ensembles on television, ensemble television shows now than there used to be. Used to be just like a cast of two, usually a hero and a sidekick. And it was that way for years. Now, nowadays, with all these comedy shows, with Raymond and Friends, and whatnot, uh, a lot of ensembles. And you can't always service everyone every week. So maybe that brings out a, a little maybe bit more sense. Maybe it's just people are really insecure. Maybe it's just it's individuals. Probably in, in any media. Yeah. yeah, and I really believe that the tone was set by oh, yeah. the people, like the producer, Absolutely. the executive producer, sets a tone. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, in terms of the way people treat one another, executive producer, the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Set a great the work ethic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mood on set is a lot about the DP, don't you think? Mm, but the audience will never know. I, don't, I think it changed for us, you know, but every other week we had someone, you know, they alternated. Um, well, yes, because the director was still the guest as compared to the DP. But I think it's more the star, star, stars, whatever, than anyone. That they follow the that, lead. That of. You're, uh, you are inviting, that you are uh, inviting them into the family unit, you know. That, but I do and relate you're to the being jealous thing. Well, I do relate to that. Do you remember, I mean, remember on Dangerous Prey? Do you remember how, um, what's his name, Murdoch, I oh, remember his character, no. he wanted to leave for some reason, he didn't want to wait because his next scene was going to be at the end of the day and he didn't want to wait all day and so they're doing Lucy stuff, but Lucy's been working since 6 a.m. and been working all week and weeks in and out before that. That's what Renee was directing. <clears throat> yeah, I was directing. And it was just interesting, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of it anyway, but to be on the other side saying, look, you know, we have the people that are working day in and day out. You've got to cover that. And because she's back on the next morning, and to, to appease an ego was really in interesting. Of, of a guest star. Of a guest yeah. star. That was Who really should have just been on his best behavior. Yeah. You know, when you're, when you're coming into something, you'd be on your best behavior. And, um, but talking about work, work ethic, because you're there, you're working. I think you were pregnant. You were what? You were very mm -hmm. pregnant. No, you weren't pregnant. No, I had that. No, I was talking about outfit. Outfit. Yeah, yeah, you were oh, pregnant. Right. That's right. Only one pregnant. I was in a bikini. Yeah, that's right. Um, <laughs> anyway, but you set a work ethic for, you know, well, everyone did. The grips, you know, everyone. Everybody was slave in the same way. Yeah. So, I mean, it was interesting to have someone come in and not want to yeah, participate. That guy hurt himself just Good. by being hurt <clears throat> Nancy. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> right, and Renee says to him, look, you know, I know how hard this is. He goes, look, you just don't understand. You do not understand. She goes, yes, I do. He goes, look, you don't know. You truly don't know how hard it is to learn this thing and do it and then hurt yourself and still have to go back on it. She goes, I do understand. He goes, you can't. And she goes, look, yeah, I do.
so funny. <laughs> Six years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was interesting. Whoa. But yeah, you just set the, talking about that, you set the standard. She was being pretty nice and nice with him. I was too nice. You know, looking back, I was a little too soft on him. <laughs> but I was worried he was going to leave the set. You know, things that you worry about. Oh. I was truly worried he wasn't going to perform. He wouldn't get out of the car or something at some point. Uh, so I went up precious. there and he was like, you know, saying, look, Lucy's when she's on set, she's doing it. And he goes, oh, she'll understand. No, she did not understand. So I went up to the car and said, you get your <laughs> ass down there on set and you do your work. So I know, <laughs> it's funny because I, I, didn't, I didn't do that with him. And I, and I was actually glad that you did, you know, because someone needed to. And there was no one else that was doing that. And I thought, well, was I, why was I so soft on him? Oops, sorry. I was so soft because I was, yeah, there was a little bit of fear that mm. I stopped to work with him. Like, that was right. Friday, I think. I had worked with him all day Saturday, and I was worried, what if I, you know, what if he just shuts down? He did shut down on me on Saturday anyway. He was, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, he actually was, he, had, he was he had wor very he, worst behavior on Saturday, if you can believe it. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because it gets me. But yeah, he yeah. was like saying names and all sorts of stuff. But yeah, he was. He was yeah, not about you, but yeah. Not me. Uh, <laughs> actually directed at me. I'm like, did I just hear that? You know, it was amazing. But you know what? That's really good training yeah. if you was a director. It was mm -hmm. really good training. Oh, thinking about that guy. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Because you have to. It's a delicate balance. You still have to. You don't want him to shut down. You need a performance, but at the same time, you got to snap him out of whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I think when your baby's right. like that, it's like, um, it's like children. It is. For somebody exactly like him, he children. was being a bad yeah. baby, and he needed. Yeah. It, it, there's no discussion about this. It's, yes, yeah, okay, get on your mark. Just yeah. notice it from the beginning. Just keep it real simple for them, because but, they, yeah. he yeah. was being a, a naughty, yeah. silly little boy at 40 something years old. It's not acceptable. That was he really? <laughs> yeah, that was a whole period. But yeah, that was a good lesson because I was still like the kid, you know. And it was only my second episode, and still a little green, and uh, but yeah, that was a that was vital. That was a good one to put your foot down. Yeah, put it in my back pocket. So yeah. if you remember how to handle that. Well, we gossip right out of time. Oh. Yeah, it's we got oh, we yeah, got to pick sure up babies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> go on, run, go. 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 I said I'd talk you out of your chair. Thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you, ladies. Thank you, pregnant lady. Thank you, lady with Thank you, money. lady. <laughs> thank you, lady. Do you know who that is? Lady. Lady. It's <laughs> Jerry Lewis. Was that in your room, too? Did you ask, know who I was I doing? I wanted to hear about your Foster Galactica. Lucy, are you, um, um, I don't know anything are you about go? it. Are you yeah, going? I am going up. So you're all okay. I was just saying, Renee, I over-questioned. I had such, I had at least another page of full, full of great stuff. And last time yeah. I came up short. Oh. Well, we got it so gossipy, and so I also think... But that's the best, right? That's the best. Yeah. This one? No, you're quoted in a saying, I don't right, think I knew my own sexual I was cast on Xeno and worked with Lucy Lawless. What did that mean? <laughs> I have no idea what that means. <laughs> this one here? I knew my own sexuality at all. Oh, my God! Well, I, I'm dying to know. <laughs> hey, Ren. No, I'll just re I'll read this through the door. Yeah. This is one of the questions. Renee, you were quoted you were quoted in an article saying, I don't think I knew my own sexuality at all until I was cast on Xena and worked ar around Lucy Lawless. What did you mean? What did you mean? Let me just flesh that one. <laughs> <laughs> what did I mean? What the hell did you mean by that? That's funny. What the on God's green earth does that mean? Lucy talked with Bill Clinton. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Introduce me to the John Favreau show. The answer to that would be yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, grab my coffee and start to, um, yeah, yeah. Because you, you're always confident in your body, I thought. You know, I didn't know you were called Unco. Maybe then I would have changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, you're always confident in your sexuality. It's good to be around women who are confident in their sexuality, you see, because then. Can you go down first and actually get you coming out the door? Uh, yeah. Okay. Same thing. Are you going to be in town for a little bit? Yeah, not for long, like the next couple of months. Oh. And then off to Canada. Hmm. I have one last question. What was the latest movie you saw? Walk the Line. <laughs> Did you like it? Oh, did you? oh, you got your Walk the Line hair cut on. Got your hairstyle okay. on. <laughs>
I haven't seen a movie in, I did see Capote, it's the only movie I've seen in about a year. Hugs. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, yeah.